This project contains complete design, procurement and making of electronic circuit and all additional components for opening sliding gate automatically. Components needed for this project are electric motor, gears which are further divided to motor reduction and rack and pinion, housing and lastly electronic circuit. The first two components are selected by calculating some of the most basic physical quantities that describe the movement of sliding gate, force and opening velocity. With these two, we will be able to determine needed torque and motor RPS, and also needed reduction ratio and gear diameter. Force can be acquired experimentally. In this LEGO example, we type a rope at the end of the sliding gate and gradually place weights on the other side of the rope until the gate starts to move. All that's left is to measure the mass of the weight. This is included in the following formula. For LEGO example, it takes a force of 0.04 newtons to move the gate. This experiment should be carried in worst conditions, when the friction is maximum. That implies dry weather and wear out and poorly lubricated casters. That way we ensure that the force in practical application never supersedes the calculated force by which we choose electric motor. Opening velocity is also determined experimentally by pushing sliding gate at the desired velocity and measuring the time it takes to travel certain path. Afterwards, these measured parameters are included in the following formula. For LEGO example, desired velocity is around 0.083 meters per second. Now that we have determined force and velocity, we can obtain all other necessary parameters by which we choose our motor and gears. For motor, there are two important parameters which are torque that depends on the force and rotational speed that depends on velocity. Taking a closer look, we see that gear diameter and reduction ratio appear in both formulas which makes them interdependent. In other words, when we pick a motor with a certain torque and rotational speed, we inadvertently affect the reduction ratio and gear diameter needed to achieve desired opening speed. The gear diameter in question concerns the gear that drives the rack, and thus the gate, and is mounted on the output shaft of the motor reduction. Finding motor parameters is pretty straightforward. Every motor has its most important parameters written on its housing and for more detailed description, informations are widely available on manufacturer's website. Table shows one of such detailed descriptions. Important parameters are pointed out in red. Motors quite often have a built-in reduction that reduces rotational speed for a particular application. As we can see in the table, there is a specified reduction ratio which means this motor has a built-in reduction that reduces motor rotational speed by 30. For our LEGO example, with calculated force and velocity, we pick a motor with following parameters. We've also specified reduction ratio for the motor. We incorporate these values in two previously discussed formulas. We get a result for gear diameter and we have to select the closest standard gear diameter in relation to the calculated result. It's pretty clear that 30 mm is closest to our result. With gear diameter being 30 mm, the gate velocity won't be as precise as calculated, but that's okay. Now we can calculate the needed torque for opening LEGO gate. We see that motor torque is greater than torque needed, so condition is satisfied. It's advisable to have the motor torque at least three times greater than the torque needed to open the gates, so to ensure high safety factor and long lifespan of the motor. We see that this condition is satisfied as well, so we can safely use selected electric motor for moving our LEGO gates. It's worth mentioning that choosing a bigger gear diameter will result in a higher opening speed but also higher demanded torque, so thread lightly. One of the reasonable questions would be, what type of motor should I use? And the answer to that is long, complex and dull. Every motor has its pros and cons and to me personally, most importantly, price. If you have old motors laying around in your garage, you should definitely try to use them. But keep in mind, there will be some drawbacks that should be dealt with along the way. Universal motors, most common in household applications, have one pretty considerable disadvantage and that is high rotation speed, around 10,000 revolutions per minute, which demands a high reduction ratio. Why is that bad? Well, reduction is quite expensive and consumes a portion of power generated by motor, so the motor has to be somewhat stronger for that reason. Asynchronous motors in households most often occur in washing machines, but are too weak to put up a fight. Power of the motor has to be at least 300 watts depending on the gate weight. Next best place to find asynchronous motors that are strong enough for the job can be found in water pumps. Motors that are running water pumps are usually above 500 watts, which is more than enough for moving the gates. These motors are quiet, cheap, don't generate sparks, have long lifespan, lower speed rotation and high power to weight ratio. 
Only drawback is that they're harder to control. Rotational speed cannot be changed with voltage but with frequency. And for that, you'd need a frequency converter that's more expensive than reduction and motor combined. So without it, the gate cannot gradually slow down or speed up. Since the gate don't move all that fast, by shutting down the motor a little bit earlier while closing them should work just fine for them not to collide with anything. For my example, I was lucky enough to find an old asynchronous motor used specifically for moving sliding gates, so it came along with the speed reduction and a housing for the ladder. New motor like this one costs around $200, but this used one I paid only $15. Motor reduction has a worm drive, which is great for this purpose because it only allows rotation from one side, aside from the motor itself. Trying to rotate the gear by hand will fail. In other words, sliding gates cannot be opened or closed by hand. Reduction ratio for worm drive is 1 to 30, which means that for every rotation of the gear on the output shaft, motor will rotate 30 times. Rack and pinion ensure translation of rotational motion into linear. For my gates 4.5 meters long, 5 racks, each 1 meter in length, should suffice. They are made of ABS plastic and are intended for gates not heavier than 800 kilograms. While installing them, a care must be taken that the height of the racks with respect to the ground is always constant while moving the gates. Also, the depth of the racks has to be constant in respect to the pillar. If any of these conditions were not to be met, rack wouldn't fit perfectly on the pinion or would even lose grip while opening and closing gates, which is unacceptable. Housing ensures that all parts are fastened, protected from external influences and precisely placed in relation to each other. Inside the housing is a motor reduction and above it motor and electronic hardware are fixed. All of this is covered with plastic cover to ensure protection against rain, snow and animals. Electronic circuit consists of several components easily available at affordable prices on eBay. The necessary components are two solid state relays with which we control the motor. Two pieces are needed because the motor must be able to rotate in both directions. Relay allows us to control powerful electric AC or DC appliances with very low voltage and current value. This type of relay is activated at only 3 volts with AC or DC regardless and is characterized by higher current load and longer, safer and quieter operation compared to most common electromagnetic relays. Next, a time delayed relay which controls the signal lamp. The light bulb is powered from the main grid. It's an electromagnetic relay who intermittently and independently turns the bulb on and off as long as the signal is present at its input. This ensures that the signal lamp flashes without having to program such behavior in the code. It is powered with 7.5 volt adapter via transistor and Arduino. Next, ER sensor. In order to ensure the safety of passers and animals during the cycle of opening and closing the sliding gate, it's necessary to use an infrared sensor that will detect any obstruction during motor operation and turn it off immediately. The purchased ER sensor works under a voltage of 12 to 24 volts, so it will be powered by an 18 volt adapter with a minimum current of 500 milliamperes. The ER sensor is controlled via Arduino through transistor. 
One component of the ER sensor is the transmitter and it emits infrared radiation, while the other one is receiver and it receives it. When someone passes between the sensors, the transmitted ray does not reach the receiver and the receiver automatically sends a signal to the Arduino that it's not receiving anything. In other words, an obstruction has occurred. When installing the sensor, we have to make sure that the transmitter and receiver are aligned. Next, transistors for ER sensor and time delayed relay. We use NPN transistors BD437 and S8050 with the characteristic values seen from the datasheets. The most important are VBE, VCE and IC values. VBE is voltage with which we put the transistor in the conduction state when we apply it to the base pin. When the voltage is removed from the base of the transistor, the transistor will stop conducting. VCE is voltage that the transistor can withstand during operation and is applied to collector pin. Emitter pin is connected to the ground naturally. EC is current that the transistor can withstand during operation. VBE voltage is provided by the Arduino and VCE voltage is provided by 18V adapter for ER sensor and 7.5V adapter for relay. It's very important that the transistors are connected in series after the consumers because otherwise their function would be meaningless. Next, remote control with which we operate the sliding gate from a distance. Receivers are powered by a 7.5V adapter. Remote controls have four buttons of which only two will be used, A and C. Five pieces were ordered on eBay, but unfortunately each receiver is compatible only with a single remote, meaning it's necessary to connect all five receivers in parallel so we could ensure that each remote control works. Next, limit switch. Notifies Arduino when sliding gate is fully opened or fully closed. It connects to a 7.5 volt adapter and when the limit switch is closed, gate is fully opened or closing. And the input pin on the Arduino is high. When the limit switch is open, gate is fully closed or opening, and the input of the Arduino is low. Arduino. We should not spend too many words on the Arduino because a book can be written. The most important thing is that we'll use it to manage all other previously mentioned components. It's powered by a 7.5 volt adapter and has 4 inputs and 5 outputs defined. First of all, it's necessary to solder the pins to the used inputs and outputs of the Arduino so there are no weak, intermittent contacts. The current load of the Arduino is limited to about 200 mA, and since many outputs and inputs are used, it's necessary to limit the amount of current to each of them using a resistor, to reduce the heating and current load of the Arduino. Lastly but not leastly, safety components. Resistors prevent floating signal on Arduino pins and thus false triggering. Fuses prevent too much current to flow through circuit, thus preventing damage to motor and other electronic equipment. And lastly, varistors ensure steady voltage from the main power grid. In order to explain to the Arduino what, how and when we want something to work, we do it in its language, within the software created exclusively for Arduino programming and available on the official Arduino website for free. This programming language is very easy to use and understand and it takes a little time and a bit of goodwill to be able to program far more complex tasks than the one that will be presented here. In the first 8 lines of code, pins 2, 4, 7, 8, 12, 13, A0 and A2 are declared constant integers and are assigned with names that represent the component that each of the pins control. Within the void setup code, through which the Arduino passes only once during power up, each pin is defined, whether it is an input or output. The motor opening and motor closing pins control solid state relays that turn on the motor and depending from which pin the signal is sent from, its rotation is in clockwise or counterclockwise direction. So these two pins are outputs because they send a signal. Pin light also sends a signal to the relay which then intermittently turns on the light bulb so it is defined as output. The turn on ER sensor pin sends a signal to a transistor that connects an ER sensor with a 12 volt adapter. The limit switch pin receives a signal from the switch when the door is fully opened or closed so it is defined as input. When the signal is 0 volts the door is completely closed and when it's 5 volts fully opened. The ER sensor signal pin is the input. It receives a signal from the ER sensor when there is an obstruction, for example, someone passed in front of the door. It's very important to set the obstruction to be identified by the absence of a signal. Respectively, when there is no obstruction, the signal is constantly present on the pin. Because in case the ER sensor fails, the Arduino must interpret the absence of a signal as an obstruction and shut down the motor, regardless of whether it's an obstruction or a faulty ER sensor. This prevents unwanted injuries in the event of an ER sensor failure during operation. Pins button A and button C are signals that Arduino receives from the receiver, who in turn receives signals from the remote control. 
Within the void loop code, through which the Arduino passes over and over again, hence the term loop, are conditions that, if satisfied, trigger a portion of the program code. Inside the first portion of the code called start, the Arduino is ordered to do nothing as long as the signal on the button A pin is low. Otherwise, if the signal is high, which means that the A button on the remote control was pressed, the Arduino should switch to a portion of code called opening door. In the opening door code, the Arduino sends signals to the relay to turn on the light bulb, to the transistor to turn on the ER sensor, and to the relay to turn on the motor in the opening door direction. Afterwards, the Arduino passes on to the next portion of the code called if statements for opening, in which three if conditions are defined. The first condition if means that if the signal is low on the input pin ER sensor, there is an obstruction in front of the door and the motor has to be stopped. After removing the obstruction, program waits for three seconds and returns to the part of the code, opening doors, where the motor starts again. The second condition if is in case the C button is pressed on the remote control. Arduino turns off the motor, lamp and ER sensor and keeps them off until the button is pressed again when everything turns back on again, through the opening doors code. In other words, button C pauses the Arduino code. That's convenient when, for example, we don't want the door to close automatically because we have to wait another vehicle that also needs to enter the yard. The third condition if is when the limit switch closes, which means that the door is fully opened. Closed switch sends a signal to the Arduino who turns off the motor, waits for 5 seconds and goes to the closing door part of the code. If none of the if conditions are satisfied, the Arduino returns to the beginning of the if statements for opening code and goes through it over and over again until one of the conditions is met. In the closing door code, everything is the same as in the opening door, except the motor rotates in the opposite direction. In if statements for closing code are, just as in if statements for opening code, three if conditions with the same purpose. The only difference is when the third condition is met, when the limit switch opens, which means that the door is fully closed, the program is sent to the beginning of the code, start. Pressing the A button restarts the entire door opening and closing process. It is important to note that with the motor and lamp, the ER sensor is also turned off to save energy while the Arduino is in the standby mode. The figure shows the wiring schematics. Resistors that connect the Arduino pins directly to ground ensure that the signal does not float, leading to a false trigger. Resistors that connect the Arduino to the bases of the two transistors ensure that the Arduino pins do not burn out when the transistors are turned on. Other resistors mainly serve to lower the voltages of 7.5 volts and 18 volts to an Arduino's susceptible 5 volts at the inputs. Pressing button A on the remote control starts the opening process. First the lamp lights up, then the ER sensor, and finally, if there's no obstruction in front of the ER sensor, the motor, in the direction of the gate opening. If an obstruction is found between the ER sensor during operation, the motor shuts down immediately and the program waits until the obstruction is removed. When the gate reaches the end, it will strike the limit switch with its movement and turn it on, thus letting the Arduino know that the motor has to be switched off. After 5 seconds, the motor restarts in the opposite closing direction. In case the C button on the remote control is pressed at any time, the program will pause and wait until it's pressed again. After that, the program continues where it left off. As the gate approached the end of the closure, it will strike the limit switch again and turn it off, letting the Arduino know that the motor, lamp and ER sensor must be switched off. After executing the program, the Arduino remains in standby mode, where it waits for the A button to be pressed again. To ensure a good connection between the Arduino and other electronic components, we need to solder them to the PCB board. One of the goals is to ensure that the PCB board can be easily detached from the rest of the equipment in case of any repairs or subsequent Arduino programming. To accomplish that, we use copper pins that will later be connected via dupe and connectors to other components that are not on the board, such as receivers, relays and others. The transistors are also attached to the board via dupe and connectors in case of their failure and easy replacement.
few moments later. You have to be careful.